If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, long haul truckers, drivers, and people who drive overnight. What is the creepiest supernatural thing or creature you've seen on the roads? I was on a night-long road trip from Dallas, Texas, to Lafayette, Louisiana. I left Dallas around 6 to 7 p.m., got food on the road, and was alone for the drive. It got dark when I crossed over into Louisiana, and it was just me and the darkness and the trees and the music I brought along to listen to. Being from Dallas, I was used to street lights lighting my way, but driving through rural Louisiana, there weren't any. It was pretty chill at first, until I noticed a persistent light shining down on my dashboard. I got super freaked out by this. I slowed down, but it stayed with me. I sped up, and it stayed with me. I was starting to get paranoid, were they aliens? The men in black? Some super secret conspiracy? Some sort of unknown skybound angler fish that tried to trap travelers on dark country roads? I had no idea what was going on. Too scared to stop, I went as fast as I could, and still be legal, and focused on that light shining onto my dashboard. There were no other cars on the road either, so I didn't really know what to make of it. I was riding a motorcycle south of Alice Springs towards the South Australian border at about 2 during the winter. It was a clear, moonless night. Every now and again, I'd stop to warm my hands on the engine. The first time, I turned the engine off and was shocked by the darkness. You could tell the horizon by where the stars stopped. But other than that, there is no light. I might have been the last living organism on Earth. After that, I left the engine and lights on when I stopped. I was driving home through Kentucky. It was the middle of the night, and we were going to run out of gas. I pulled off a remote exit for gas, but the station was closed. There was a police car idling on the side of the lot, so I went over to ask if he knew where the closest open station was. But the officer didn't move. It was like he was sleeping, but in a horrible position. I tried knocking on the window again, but nothing. I noticed the fog was starting to roll in like a bad horror movie, so I got back in my car and headed back for the interstate. There was a mileage sign coming up, and as I got closer, I saw a girl standing by the sign. I turned to look behind me as I drove past, but she was gone. She couldn't have been older than 10 in pigtail braids and a nightgown. I finally found an open station at the next exit, but all anyone did was stare at me. Not a single word. Needless to say, I got the duck out of there. Driving down a small highway in Missouri, it's a warm night in July. I've got my window down, and I'm just smoking a cigarette, minding my own business, when I see three lights up ahead. They're on the opposite side of the road, and the way they're aligned, they look like they belong to a motorcycle. I don't think anything of this until I get closer, close enough that I should be able to see the bike or anyone around it. Nothing. Just three lights, shining out into the night, apparently attached to nothing. As I start to pass the lights on my left, I see in my peripheral vision what looks like a person, but this person is completely white. An opaque white figure stands behind the lights, and I can feel that it's looking at me. As I finally pass by, I look in my mirror to find out what the figure was. But instead, I see nothing but an empty field, no lights, no figure, no bike, nothing behind me for miles. The hair stands up on the back of my neck, and I book it out of the area. I have never seen anything like it since, despite traveling on that road quite frequently. My husband's story. He was driving up north to Camarillo, California, to visit family late at night. And at a certain point, the highway became almost desolate. Rarely would he see a car or two pass by. So in his sleepy state, he starts to notice that a car is staying very close to him. Confusion sets in because there was more space for the person in the car to move around. So he speeds up a little more, and yet the car persists. At this point, my husband became a little more alert and started trying to speed up to get the car off his tail. He loses focus on the speed, trying to lose the car. Suddenly, relief washes over him as the familiar colors of red and blue illuminate right behind him in the car. That's when he realized he had gone over 100 and slowly came to a stop. The car slowed down and pulled over in front of him. He waited and sighed a breath of relief when the officer tapped on his window and asked for a license and registration. My husband complies while the officer questions him. As he digs around, the officer goes silent. When my husband goes to hand him the papers, he asks the officer what is wrong. The officer is staring ahead, and my husband follows his gaze to find the car gone. That's when the fear sets in. There was no sign of it anywhere. The officer instantly tells him to get the hell out of there, and both take off. The officer followed my husband for a while to ensure he was safe. And my husband never ran into the car again. I'm driving to a friend's house. I live in urban NC, 
He lives in the middle of nowhere with his parents. Usually we'd both be at college, but it's winter break, and we've been itching to see each other for a while due to shared interests. Anyways. I make it a fair way into the rolling, forested, brown rural Piedmont, and there's just great visibility. You can see all the way to the top of the next hill, the sky is clear and blue, and there are no other cars. Pop. Something whaps against my back window, and there's a flash in the side of my vision. I'm driving a small two-door car, and so whatever the duck it was, I was going 55, was right there. Okay. I'm not one to freak out, and I checked my rearview mirror, expecting a bird carcass. Maybe a swan or something else white that looked like a flash ran into my car. Well, I see a few more flashes from a power line and realize a transformer must have blown out, and either a bit of debris hit my window or maybe a jolt of electricity. This is a completely normal event. Odd, but explainable. I get to my friend's house five minutes later, expecting him to not have power, but no. He does. Huh. Well, the visit goes well, we chat, and we make cookies. It gets dark, and I decide to head back. So on my way back, I take a quick look as I'm driving to check out the state of the line, curious if it's still sparking. It's not, everything about the back country is normal. I get an odd feeling as I pass by, the whole neck hair standing up thing, but I brush it off. Probably just electricity in the air, not surprising. But for some reason, I take one more look in the rear view mirror. I think it was just to get one more little check for sparks, it wasn't like there was anything else interesting to check out in the middle of nowhere. My red tail lights illuminate the side of the hill just enough for me to see a humanoid figure standing there, beside the poet line. Its neck was far too long to be normal, and it sure as hell hadn't been there as I was heading towards it. My eyes went a bit wide because I just played slender recently, and I slammed the gas. I went about 20 over the whole way back and have never checked my rearview mirrors as often as I did on that trip. I've since considered that it might just have been a deer, but. I dunno. Its legs weren't right for that. Maybe a bear? Theoretically, they could live in that area. Whatever it was, it was creepy as duck. It was 3 AM, and I was driving home with a friend of mine. There was very little traffic on the interstate. Up ahead, on the side of the road, I see what looks like a man sitting on a guardrail. I got a horrible feeling in my gut. I had the feeling this guy was going to do something bad. I honestly felt as though he was going to jump in front of our truck to commit suicide or something. As we get closer, he stands up. I moved into the next lane. As we get closer, he starts walking into the road. I start panicking. There was no time to slow down, and I could not swerve to avoid him for fear of rolling the truck. My friend and I start screaming. Just as we were about to hit, what I thought was a man jumps, has ducking wings, and jumps over the entire truck. It was only visible for a second, but I can still remember it as clear as day. It had the body of a man from the head to the waist, but from the waist down, it was hairy. The wings were also dark. The feet were the worst. Instead of human feet, there were these horrible talons, which were also dark and hairy. The best comparison I can make is that it looked like a human-sized gargoyle. I know this sounds like a load of shit, and I probably wouldn't believe me either, but I swear it's the truth. In total honesty, I wish it wasn't true. It was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. If my friend hadn't seen it as well, I would think I'd gone crazy. Also, since this is the internet, I doubt most will believe me in any way. I just wanted to share my story. On a side note, in the past few years since that night, I've met one other person who has seen the same, if not extremely similar, creature. My family on my mom's side owns property in a small town in Texas. They live near a river, so we'll drive up to hang out, camp, and swim. It's a 5-6 to six hour drive to and from the property, and the main road that you have to take is surrounded by woods. It's so scary at night because it's pitch black, and the only light you can get is from the moon and the car lights. One time, when my family was making our way home, I kept seeing eyes shining from inside the forest. Of course, I just thought it was the animals in the woods. All of a sudden, my mom starts driving way faster than she usually does. I asked her why she was going so fast, especially on a super dark road, but she just told me not to worry about it. I looked in the passenger side mirror and saw a huge, dark figure running right behind our car. It was like it was chasing our car. I couldn't really make out what it was, but I wanted to scream. My mom told me not to, so I wouldn't wake up my sisters and get them freaked out too. We finally lost it after a while, and me and my mom talked about it when we finally got home. My mom thinks that maybe it was a bear, but I looked it up and there weren't any reported bears in that area. I didn't bring it back up with her, but it still creeps me out. We still go back to the property, 
but my mom makes sure that we leave before it gets dark, so don't run into that thing again. My sister visited our parents in around 82, she lived in Toronto. I wasn't born yet. Our parents live in a rural area, and one of the areas you have to drive through was, at the time, a heavily wooded area. Still is, just less so, so my sister left around 9 pm, drove through the area, and got beyond it, then her car broke down, thankfully in front of a family friend's house. She calls dad, and he comes to get her. As they're driving back to the house, it's about 10 pm. Or so, and they're just chatting and listening to the radio when they hear an incredibly loud scream, louder than the engine, then the radio, then them talking. Dad slams on the brakes, and they're like, WTF was that? All of a sudden, a coyote or something walks in front of the car on two legs, and this thing is like six or seven feet tall. It also had an unusual tail that was a black and white stripe. It walked in front of the car and into the trees on the other side, then they heard the scream again, and dad got the duck out of there. He never saw anything like it again. I wasn't even driving that far, but on a rural highway on the way back to my college town in the middle of the night, maybe 3 a.m. or so, I was with my friend. This is rural western Oklahoma, fairly flat. A deer or something on the side of the road, or even crossing it at night, isn't anything unusual. Dark as hell. No street lights or anything, just the occasional reflector. But this wasn't a deer. It looked like a mountain lion, but it walked like a deer, and it didn't have a head. Normally animals' eyes are reflective in headlights, but there were no eyes. It walked across the road about 50 feet in front of my car, passed through my headlights, and turned and walked back in the same direction. I thought I was hallucinating from sleep deprivation, but then my friend said, what the duck was that, and where was its head? There aren't enough mountain lions or bobcats in the area for me to seriously consider that it could be what it was, but I don't know what else it could be. But it didn't have a head. This happened in 2016 in the middle of the summer. I was 16 years old and was driving home from hanging out with a couple of my friends. It was around 3 to 4 a.m., so it was pitch black outside. I don't even remember the moon being very bright. I was about 3 miles from home and driving pretty fast, 60 to 70 miles per hour, because I had to get home before my mom woke up. I came over the top of a really tall hill and was going down it when, on the right side of the road, this thing stepped out. It was really tall and a weird orange slash tan color, and I only saw it for a couple seconds because, like I said, I was driving fast. I distinctly remember feeling like it looked right at me, even though I didn't see any facial features. And immediately after I went by it, I got extremely upset, like ugly crying and scared, but I couldn't really say why. It's not like this thing did anything other than stand there. Even thinking about it now makes something in me a little upset. I wasn't drinking that night or on any drugs. And I feel like this is important, but this happened in rural central Iowa, and that's why I'm not going to say Bigfoot or anything because you don't really hear about people seeing that type of thing in Iowa. But I'd love to hear what y'all think it was. In the middle of winter, about 4 a.m., at least 30 inches of snow cover the ground, not the road. I was driving back from a casino towards Virginia, Minnesota, just north of Cloquet, Minnesota. My friend and I were about four car lengths behind a pickup truck and gaining, so I went to switch lanes. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed movement. I looked just in time to see some sort of bipedal running full speed across the road, in front of the truck, into the right of way, and off into a forest. The truck slammed on his brakes, as did I. My friend and I looked at each other slack jawed as we crept past the truck in complete shock, too scared to stay stopped because we both knew we saw something extraordinary. The truck driver looked like he had seen a ghost and appeared in shock as well. We noped it out of there as fast as we could trying to process what just happened. We got a few miles down the road and simply asked each other if we just saw what we thought we just saw. Without a doubt, we both witnessed something less than four feet tall and impossibly sprinting on two legs through dam close to three feet of snow. We went back to her place outside of Virginia and locked the doors and windows. It didn't matter, as neither of us could sleep a wink that night. To this day, I wish I would have stopped and spoke with that truck driver to see if he got a better glimpse, as he was a yard away from smoking the goddamn thing. I now live in North Carolina. The reason I say this is because in southern states, there are miles upon miles of roads with just trees on both sides, along with basically hidden gate openings where I can only assume people go back to hunt. And if you also didn't know, southern states usually have ditches on the sides of roads. One late winter night, my boyfriend and I were traveling to the store for snacks. While talking to my boyfriend, looking out of his driver's side window, starting in the windscreen, but my eyes followed. I see a person just standing against the tree line with, honest to God, 
nothing below the knees. This stretch of road to the closest town or store is 1 to 1.5 miles long, not to mention it was around 20 degrees that night. He was also standing directly next to an orange road marker that every driver notices. For background, when I tell you my boyfriend notices almost everything on the road, I mean it. There have been many times where a deer jumped out in front of the car or was on the side of the road, and I never noticed until after he said something. Once we get past the man in the woods, I turn around in my seat, not even three seconds later, and suddenly the man is gone. He didn't have time to get into the woods. My boyfriend notices I'm confused and slightly concerned, asking what's up. I tell him there was a man along the tree line. He swears up and down he never saw anyone on the road that night, which again is extremely odd for him, especially with the marker basically illuminating the tree line, dude. I went to college in Athens, a little town in the Appalachian foothills of southern Ohio. The city is mostly in a little valley between two or three ridges. A friend of mine lived up on one of the ridges over town. I said that I'd take her to catch a flight that left the airport in Columbus at like 5 in the morning, since I was basically nocturnal in those days and would be in way better shape for driving to Columbus at 2 a.m. than she would. So I was driving up the side of the ridge at 1.30 or so on this road that would have barely been a bike path in one of the bigger cities, with no guardrails, reflectors, or really anything to let you see the drop-off. I stopped at a stop sign and started thinking about all the deer around town and how it might not be a bad idea to put my brights on. As soon as I do, out of nowhere, I see three or four deer standing a foot or two off the side of the road, maybe 15 feet ahead of me. One of them even had a hoof in the road. I had not seen them at all with my normal beams. They stood there and stared me straight in the face through the windscreen, and then the one that had stepped into the road stepped back, and they all walked off down the road single file past my car. At the time, it mostly scared the crap out of me because of the thought of, you know, what if I kept going and ran into them right there next to the drop? But in retrospect, it sort of weirds me out because of how suddenly they appeared and how strange their behavior seemed for deer. I live in Victoria, Australia, and there have long been legends of big cats in the area, particularly in the western region. If you look around on the net, there are websites devoted to sightings full of videos, photos, and the like. I've lived here my whole life and never really thought too much about it. I live in one of the larger towns here and recently started dating a lady who lives on a farm about 20 minutes out of town, a pretty straightforward trip up the highway, one turn off, and along a dark, unlit, narrow country road for the last five minutes. I've done this trip a few times and nothing out of the ordinary until two weeks ago. As I was driving down the unlit road with my high beams on, I noticed movement on the road ahead, followed by two glowing eyes. As I got closer, I saw it was a black cat. It wasn't until I got closer that I realized how big it was. It stood up and was as high as the bonnet of my car. Its tail was thick. The thing was ducking huge. It was no ordinary cat. As I got about 10 meters from it, it took off into the nearby bushes. I slowed down and redirected my car's headlights into the bushes, but I couldn't see anything, and after a few moments, I continued on to my lady's house. I told her about it, and now I hate going out to her farm, sitting on the porch, and staring out into darkness. Okay, so this is from my grandmother, who used to own a construction company in Taiwan. She was a badass in that, you know, the construction business always has ties to gangs, etc., and that she was a woman who owned one. They dealt with stones, like quarry stuff, I guess? She was in a truck with her driver, coming back at night on a winding mountain road, when her driver was like, ma'am, I can't drive anymore, I'm seeing double roads all of a sudden. We need to stop. In Chinese folklore, when you start seeing two roads when you know there should only be one, it means that there's a malicious ghost trying to trick you into falling off a cliff or crashing. So they stop and park on the side of the road to wait for this to clear up. About 10 minutes in, a wolf or a wild dog comes out of the mountains and starts circling their truck, snapping and growling at something. Then, all of a sudden, they hear it yelp in pain and see it go flying as if it got kicked really hard by something. It runs off. They waited until sunrise, which was like three hours, to start again, but it freaked them out. This happened a few years ago in Wyandotte, Michigan, near Detroit. So I'll start by saying that I've dealt with sleep paralysis on a regular basis since I was a kid. It used to freak me out when I was younger, but now it's just a part of life. Anyhow, I arrive at this shipper late one evening and check in to get loaded the next morning. The young lady at the front desk tells me I can park overnight on site, or there's a truck stop not too far down the road. Me, wanting to spare those sweet 20 minutes it'd take to drive from that truck stop to the shipper the next day, decides to park on site for the night. 
Unbeknownst to me at the time, the shipper's lot for overnight parking is practically in the middle of a cemetery. This spooked me out, but we, I don't really believe in that paranormal shit. So I park, close my shades, and lay down for the night. A few weeks prior, I switched up my bedtime routine to include earplugs, a sleeping mask, and one milligram of melatonin, anyone who's had to sleep at a truck stop will understand. On this particular night, I happened to wake up in the middle of the night, paralyzed. It was dark, I couldn't see anything. I had earplugs in, I couldn't hear anything. And I couldn't move. I remember my first thought being, am I dead? Typically, this wouldn't freak me out, as I've stated before, this was normal to me. However, tonight I just happened to be sleeping just a few yards away from the actual dead. That night, as is typical with most nights I've experienced SP, I felt a presence in the truck with me. I felt something crawl into my bunk with me and lay across my body as if it were trying to pin me down. I felt the cab shaking, though it was likely me trying to shake myself awake as I usually do. After some time, I was finally able to jolt myself awake, and I'd awaken in a cold sweat with a chill creeping up my spine. At that point, I was honestly afraid to pull back the shades and peek outside. But yeah, that was the creepiest thing I've experienced. So first off, I normally don't believe in the cryptid stuff, but because of the weirdness of what happened, I felt like this belonged here. I live in northwestern Pennsylvania, US tonight, I was driving home from hanging out at a friend's place. The way I drive home from his place, I go through a long stretch, maybe a half mile? Of nothing but fields that are completely empty on either side of the road. All of the following happened at around 10.30 am. As I rounded a bend to drive this long stretch, I suddenly had this feeling of absolute terror. I can't explain it, I've never been scared like this before, and I have absolutely no idea what brought it on. As my thoughts are wildly racing, I see on the left, about 100 yards away, some sort of animal running through the field. As I drive closer to it, I see it as some sort of dog-like creature, and at the same instant, chills course throughout my entire body. And I became even more terrified. Now, whatever this thing was, it was decently fast. It took longer strides, though, and didn't run like any dog I've ever seen before. It looked gray or tan in color, and its eyes reflected orange in my headlights. It was larger than a coyote but smaller than a German Shepherd or any breed like that. It loped across the road in front of me and disappeared into the darkness. At this point, I actually had tears running down my face. I've never been so absolutely terrified by something in my entire life. I've seen coyotes and wild dogs before, but whatever this thing was, it struck fear into me before I could even see it. I shook or cried the rest of the drive home, and as I type this, I'm still shaking a little. Honestly, I don't get scared easily, so this is pretty new for me. At this point, I'm really just wondering if anyone has any idea of what I could have possibly encountered or if anyone has had similar experiences. So I was just out on a drive with my boyfriend last night, and we were driving on a road that goes through the woods. This road is located near a very large river and is surrounded by forest, but there are also houses in this area, so it's kind of a rural road in a residential area. Anyway, last night it was kind of foggy out, but as we drove down one section of this road, the fog got much more dense. I originally didn't think anything of it because, like I said, there is a river nearby, the river probably caused the fog. But because of the fog, we had to drive incredibly slowly. As we were driving out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement, so I turned to look, and on the side of the road, there was a lone deer. Since I live in a rural area, deer are extremely common. I actually really love deer up to this point, so normally I wouldn't think twice. As soon as I looked into its eyes, my heart dropped. I got the chills, and my immediate thought was, something is extremely wrong. I need to get the duck out of here. This deer was huge, it had to be twice the size of a normal deer. It definitely wasn't a buck. And its chest looked weird too? It almost stuck out a little, and it was broader than a normal deer. And, Ike, this deer just gave me the heebie-jeebies. And as I'm thinking this, my boyfriend also goes, what the duck is that, a kangaroo? And we were talking about how freaking creepy and weird this deer was. He was saying that he didn't like the way it was looking at us. It almost looked fake, but it moved, so it was definitely alive. Physically, it had all of the characteristics of a deer, but I've never seen an animal that filled me with so much dread and triggered my fight or flight like that. Something about this animal filled me with the sense that something was wrong. And I couldn't even speed away because we were surrounded by fog, so I had to make a rather slow escape while trying not to look in the rearview mirror. In the early 1980s, my grandma was driving her pickup truck in a rural town in North Carolina with a friend on a back road with no street lights. 
It was out in the country along a stretch of road with almost no houses. Back roads with woods in every direction type of deal. They came around a curve and went over the railroad track. It was very dark, and the only light was the reflection of the moon and the headlights from the truck. As she slowed down to cross over the tracks, she said she and her friend saw what looked like apartment, part goat hybrid standing on the edge of the road in the woods, illuminated by the headlights. It had the head of a human with horns and was standing upright on its hind legs with hooves for feet. She said, if she had to guess, it was at least seven to eight feet tall based on how it looked next to the trees. It had the upper torso of a man, but she described it as so evil looking to the point that it almost didn't look human. My grandma told her friend to shut and lock the slide window of the truck that went to the bed because she was worried it could have jumped in the back of the bed. About a month later, my grandma was riding with my grandpa in the same pickup truck, traveling along another rural country road heading towards Highway 109. My grandma was asleep, but my grandpa woke her up and let her know that he saw a man-goat creature on the side of the road and described the same thing. This was about 50 miles away from the first sighting, and my grandma hadn't told him about the original sighting, so he wasn't lying or joking with her. Has anyone ever experienced anything like this before or had any similar stories? Last year, on Saturday June 27, my paranoia was at its peak. My friends wanted me to come pick them up, go to McDonald's in the nearest town, and then drive around on country roads. Because of my paranoia, I had my mom walk me outside to my car, and I had my dad watch out through the window to make sure my mom was safe going back into the house. I also had them lock the doors. My paranoia was really bad that entire summer. I picked up my friends, went to McDonald's, and started riding around country roads. This is something we do often because there's not much to do in our village in the St. Louis Metro East. We were coming back into town sometime between midnight and 1 a.m., and we noticed the moon appeared red. We started talking about it, and we began arguing about what effect a red moon has on people. Just as we started getting louder, we saw a creature on the side of the road. It seemed to be humanoid, but its forearms were much longer than its upper arms. It was very pale, almost grayish in color, with no hair. The fingers were very long and pointy, maybe claws? It also appeared to be very malnourished, we could see its ribcage. It was crouched down next to a telephone pole, just as we were coming into town. I slammed on the brakes and turned on my brights to get a better look at it. It looked at us and then zoomed up the pole faster than was physically possible. It was like a beam of light. We all went silent and started discussing what we had just seen. We all agreed that we had seen the same thing. All of our descriptions were the same. Just up the road was the friend's house we were going to. They had to run in to grab some stuff, so I stayed in the car with the doors locked and my eyes closed. When they came back outside, we backed out of the driveway to head to my house which is right down the street, and we saw it behind us, standing in the middle of the road, looking at us. My house is only a couple blocks away, so when we got there, we ran inside as fast as we could. We locked the doors and stayed at my house for a while before I eventually gave them a ride back to his house a couple hours later. A UFO I witnessed driving to work in October. It was a very large UFO, stationary around 500 yards in the air directly over my vehicle. It was quite an unsettling event and since that time I have been on the lookout for any of these objects or crafts. Here is where it gets stranger. About a month later, in September, I was once again driving to work. It is dark and in a rural setting, and I round the corner into a lighted area that has a few buildings nearby. We, my fiancé and I, are normally alone driving on this highway, this is no exception when I see a large dog walking quickly up to the side of the road on the right. Loose dogs are no strange sight around here, and I was hoping he would not run out on the road in front of us. Then he stopped directly beside the road and stood up. He did not stand up like a dog rearing up, as they sometimes do. No, he stood up like a human and seemed to morph into something else. One minute it was clearly a dog, and the next it turned into something I have never seen. It was dark, so I couldn't see much. There were a few details and an outline, but I had never seen anything like it before. It stood probably four feet high, with short front arms or legs and a flat, wide head. I could not see the lower part of it because the car was passing by and the passenger door blocked it. It stood there watching us go by, and I lost sight of it. Yes, I know, a bear, right? No, this did not look or act like a bear. It didn't look like a Bigfoot, either. I have looked on the internet for something or anything that resembles it, but to no avail. The closest thing I have seen was a dog man or werewolf, but it didn't quite look like that either. It didn't seem aggressive or violent and I did not get the feeling of ill will or that I was in danger. It just looked curious. If someone were to tell me this story, I would probably dismiss it or think they were crazy, but I did see it. 
neither I nor my fiancé do drugs or have a history of mental illness. I retired from the military, so I have been around and seen a few things, but nothing like this. I have heard of UFO sightings that have been linked to shapeshifter or Bigfoot sightings, but I have always dismissed them as crazy or people trying to cash in on UFO phenomena. Now, I am not so sure. Does anyone have any similar stories or theories of why these sightings are sometimes interlinked? So for a while, I was studying at a university in England. While there, I met my girlfriend, who lived in the city. I would go back to my home in Wales for the first two years of university during Christmas, Easter, and summer breaks. The summer was usually a big long break, and I would use it to work at my part-time job to earn money to spend on nights out for my following year of university. I don't drive and, at the time, wasn't getting along with her family, so I didn't like going to hers, so every other weekend I had off work, my girlfriend would drive down to Wales and spend some time over the weekend with me. So during the summer between my first and second years, she had to leave early. She ended up taking a different route home, as I had a night shift coming. She agreed to drive me to my night shift to save me from getting the bus, despite it taking her out of her way and meaning she had to take a different route home. After dropping me off, she was driving along, anyone who knows Wales knows that it's predominantly rural, country roads with the odd town or village scattered about, and saw a creature run across the road. She slammed on, at first thinking it was a dog or a cat. But she said, looking at it, it didn't look like either. She says it was huge, like the size of a full-grown Great Dane, and had no fur. She describes it as having large paws, bigger than they should have been for the wildlife in the area. It also moved in a way that she said seemed unusual and unnatural. Its limbs were bent but not straightening while it ran, although this could have been a trick of the light as it was very dark. The area this was in was near the village of Trelawneed, on one of the country roads just off from the garage. I've asked her to describe the creature, she's drawn it a few times but basically describes it as looking like an enormous, hairless fossa. She's a zoologist, too. So I expect her to recognize wild animals, especially since all we really have are red foxes, badgers, a few loose ferrets that have escaped, and farm animals. She's driven that route so many times since then, with me and without me, to try and spot it again, but to no avail. I even got her a dash cam, and she must have driven that route repeatedly, over and over again, to catch a glimpse of whatever it was one more time, but no such luck. While the whole thing seems unlikely, and maybe a trick of the light made something else look like what she saw, I believe her, purely due to her stubborn conviction that there was no trick of the light and what she saw was legit. She seems to cling to this with such conviction that I find it hard to doubt. I didn't see it myself, I only knew what I was told, but I thought it would be an interesting story regardless. My younger sister came home about 20 minutes ago, having a panic attack, claiming that she saw a not deer on the way home from her friend's house. I'm not super well versed in cryptids and cryptozoology, but she very much is. Here's what I know. It was 2 in the morning, a 10-minute drive through some mild to moderately forest-wide roads on the outskirts of a very big city. This is Michigan, so seeing a couple of whitetails during a drive home is nothing to fuss over. My sister was driving at a snail's pace because ah, oh, look at the whittle baby deer and it was just standing there, as deer do. However, I guess this deer, or not deer, was alone, and my sister swore to God that it had no eyes. Just white sockets, like a decaying human body. It was standing on the side of the road, its butt facing my sister's car, and then moved its front legs a few steps to make its spine look like a perfect 90 degree angle. Not a normal deer stance, that's for sure, it stared her down with white nothing eyes, not glowing like in trail camera footage or night vision, a complete lack of eyeball. Again, I was not there, so I can't vouch for accuracy. I guess her friend thought it was a good idea to stick his hand out the window and PSPSPSPS it like a cat, which got no reaction. It didn't look away from the car, but it didn't move closer, either. Eventually, my sister got so panicked that she floored it and came home. I wasn't aware of this not dear entity's existence. I know the mainstream cryptids, but that's really it, she tried to find a picture online of a not dear but came up dry. Then she said something akin to of course there wouldn't be anything about it. They don't want people to find it. And slithered off to her room to no doubt dwell on the encounter. She also said something about how we shouldn't even be talking about it. I don't know what she saw, but she was scared bad, man. It takes a lot to shake her up. She gives corpses makeovers for a living, and the local fauna is going to have to try harder to get her shaking in her boots. She isn't under any kind of substance-based influence, and while her psychological history is kind of a mixed bag, she had a witness and is medicated. She definitely saw something weird. Maybe it was a not deer, maybe it was a normal deer, maybe a skinwalker, 
maybe an outdoorsy furry with a bad sleep schedule and a spooky fursuit. I don't know, I won't know. I just figured that if anyone else might have encountered or been curious about this dead I'd dear. I'm a half Navajo, half Caucasian woman. I'm also of the Christian faith. I wasn't sure what this odd looking creature was, and I just want to know. It was just a hot October day in 2020. The Halloween stuff was going out like crazy. I started the day by getting ready for school. So, I got up and went to my mom's house to do school. She was being bugged by the youngest to do a TikTok with steampunk cosplay. So it has been halfway through the school day, and my mom took me to the school to get our lunches. After I got in the car, she told me that we should go onto the reservation by the Arizona border to do a fun TikTok, well, my sister, not me and my brothers. We had gotten the lunches, and she had said after lunch we would go to Walmart for the stuff we needed to cosplay. After about 15 minutes at the school, we brought the lunches back home. We got our lunches, and we just gobbled them down. I went to the store with my mom, and we bought the stuff. After we got back, the school day was over. We all got ready and got in the car, and she started driving us to our destination. She stopped a few times to take care of some stuff she had put off. Once we got there, it was dusk. My mom had taken off with my sister to an area to film. Me and my brothers went and checked on things, and that's when we saw the creature standing on two legs. The best way to describe its appearance is as an exomorph, like in the alien movies. Its height was the same as one as well. We froze, and it looked in our direction. It ran at us as fast as it could and stopped at the bottom of the hill we were on. It was stalking us for at least five minutes. There was a bit of yelling, and it ran that way. Once we knew it was gone, we booked it quickly back to the vehicle. We brought it up with our mom, she just didn't believe us. Since then, we haven't gone back. I can't explain this, and I really regret not having a dash cam in my car, as I wonder if I could have picked something up on camera, but sadly, all I can do is recount it. This happened about 19.45ish today, just as the sun was going down but it was still light. I live in England, specifically the East Midlands. And it's still a bit shaky, and I don't know how I can explain this. I was driving towards the A42, on the back roads and country lanes, towards the slip road for the A42. I can't recall the exact road I was on, but I definitely know it's a country lane near Cack Abbey, and I'd just gone past a place called Long Wadden, and I wanted to go for a small drive through the country as the sky was so pretty. I'm driving along, full beams on, and as I come up to this place with trees to my right and left, I see a human-shaped, solid black figure in the shape of a man just darting across the road from one group of trees to the other. I remember wondering if it was a bird, but then I saw feet touching the surface of the road, so I panicked, slammed my foot on the brake, and did an emergency stop. But here's the thing, it was pure black, it didn't look 3D like a person, there was no texture, there were no differences in skin or clothing, it was all black like a silo hat. And it moved too fast to be a person. It just started across the road, and I don't even know how it disappeared into the trees without disturbing the greenery, but it just vanished. It shook me up, but I switched on my hazards and just crawled on until I felt safe enough to speed up and go. But I didn't feel right until I got to the M5 in Birmingham, it felt like someone was watching me the whole time, and I had this horrible deja vu feeling in the back of my head. It's settled down now, and I feel safe, but holy hell, I remember every detail, right down to looking at the feet. I was up visiting for an alumni event at my former college in Kentucky, which is about 16 hours from my house in Texas. There was a hurricane on its way, and I needed to head back south. I was leaving at close to 7 p.m. to avoid the storms and had routed my journey home. I was by myself and usually use the main highways. This time I had to take a detour to avoid the path of the storm that had hit Louisiana. This detour, for the life of me, I can't remember the route. I was in Tennessee at this time and had to go across the state instead of down. This detour involved a particular forestry area where the trees were over the road and the roads were really bendy. I drove slower due to it beginning to rain, and I didn't want to go off the road. I do not remember the road at all. I turned a bend, and there were two people moving from the road. My headlights hit them. This all took place in less than 10 seconds, and my brain was moving so fast. I can't remember what the other person looked like, I just know there were two people. My headlights hit the woman, this woman had on shorts and a pink spaghetti strap t-shirt. She was walking away from the road, and my first thought was, omg, um, I almost hit her. Next, she turned as I was wondering why she was on the road, and not even a second into that thought, I realized that she had no face. My thoughts were going a million miles an hour because this person with no face was on the road. I kept driving and kept thinking, don't stop, she had no face, don't stop. 
I hit the rear view mirror up, afraid that if I looked in the back seat, she would appear. I was speeding at this point and wanted out of there. I don't know what road I was on. I have looked online for this, like a woman died on a bendy road in these close. I still have nightmares. So me and two of my friends back in high school love to go to a graveyard in our town and do some ghost hunting. On a normal night, nothing really happened, but we had fun, were ready to leave, and got back in my car. So we leave and start driving down the road next to the graveyard to get back to my place, and we were just talking for a bit when I started to notice things were weird. The road takes normally 2 to 3 minutes of driving at 30 miles per hour to get to the light where we turn, and it felt like it had been longer than that, so I brought it up to my two friends. They hadn't noticed yet, but we all started watching the clock in my car, and that's when we started to get scared. It had been 5 minutes since I had said something, and we were still driving. They both started to ask what was going on and if I was driving slowly or something to scare them, but I told them to look. I was still going 30 miles per hour, and I had been making sure to watch my speed to make sure it wasn't that. At this point, it had been 10 minutes since I said something, and just as it had started, the light where we turned showed up and just left us all speechless. Where were we during those 10 minutes? What had happened to us? We went back there many times after that, and this never happened again, and I actually live close to the graveyard now and drive down that road almost daily and have never had it happen. So I was wondering, is this something others have experienced where time seems way warped or distance traveled just doesn't add up, and does this have a name? I was driving home from work last night. I work the third shift and get off at 3.30 am. I live a little over an hour from where I work, and most of my drive takes me through the underpopulated rural countryside in South Carolina. Most nights are uneventful. The roads are deserted, and there's nothing around but me and the numerous deer. Really, that's the only thing I worry about, which night will I finally hit a deer going 60 miles per hour in my Camaro down a dark road at zero dark 30 in the morning. I mean, honestly, if I hit a deer in my ragtop, he's liable to be riding a shotgun with me. Last night started out normal enough. I started my drive home with high beams, scanning for Bambi and his pose. At about 3.45 a.m., I passed one of those homemade memorials marking the spot of a fatal accident. At the time, this didn't seem relevant to me, but looking back now, it might very well be important to note. About a quarter mile from the cross in the woods, my high beams caught the back of a young man walking down the road. He wasn't hitchhiking, he was just minding his own business while walking down the road. I was thinking, who goes for a stroll this late at night or early in the morning? I drove past him. I glanced in my rear view mirror as I sped by, looking at his face, which was lit up by my tail lights. He was so white, pale white. I caught sight of his eyes for the briefest moment. They just looked hollow. I assumed it was just the shadow of his brow from my tail lights. Again, I thought it was weird but didn't really register it as an important detail at the time. After he was out of sight, I started feeling really cold. I turned on the heat, but still, the temperature in the car felt chilly. I kept feeling like someone was sitting next to me, but when I glanced over, there was no one there. After several more minutes of this feeling, I started seeing something move in the reflection of the passenger side window. Still, there was nothing moving in the car. I just kept seeing movement peripherally. Like someone shaking their leg. I felt uneasy, nervous, and jittery. I happened to look up at the rear view mirror again, and Maya noticed something else strange. The light that indicates whether the passenger airbag is active wasn't lit up as off the way it should be when the passenger seat is vacant. As in, someone was sitting in the seat next to me. My brain processed this, and I felt my heart skip and chills run through my body. I pulled over at a deserted gas station and got out of the car for about 5 minutes. When I got the nerve to get back in the car and investigate, the uneasy feeling was gone. I cranked it up and got back on the road. The passenger airbag light was lit up as off. The heat was working again. I wasn't seeing movement out of the corner of my eye anymore. This whole experience really shook me up. I think about this a couple times a year, and I've looked it up but never found anything similar. This happened a few years ago. One night, my wife and I were driving back from Sonic. We lived in a very old, very small town in West Texas. It was raining, but not heavily. There were puddles on the ground, wet enough that it would be weird for someone to be walking around. On top of that, there are lots of roads with little or no lighting, so lots of the roads are mostly dark at night. We were driving down one such road when this happened. As my wife and I were driving, I looked to my right and saw what I can only describe as a faceless man. Not deformed, but faceless. His face was white, or really, all of him looked white. He looked almost like a blur. 
His arms seemed impossibly long, almost down to the ground, and were moving in an unnatural way. Arms swinging back and forth aimlessly, but also very fast? The best way I can describe this man's movements is that he looked like he was glitching. We weren't moving fast, probably 25 miles per hour, because we were in a residential area. I looked at him long enough that I had time to wonder what I was looking at before he went out of my view. For a second, I even wondered if someone was using a weed whacker or doing yard work, but of course not, it was 9 p.m. and raining. I said nothing to my wife, assuming my eyes had just played tricks on me. It was dark. Maybe the rain blurred the window. I didn't know. A couple hours later, my wife asked me if I noticed the man on the side of the road who had no face. It's still the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. Anyone know what this might be called? Or anyone who's had a similar experience? This happened last summer, late July, and it was me, my sister, and our cousins on their farm. We were sitting in their UTV with one of my cousins driving alongside the cornfield. We weren't going all that fast, so the noise coming from the vehicle wasn't that loud. That's when we heard what sounded like either my uncle's or my dad's voice coming from the direction of the field. But at that point in the year, the corn was above our heads, so we couldn't see anything. I told my cousin to stop driving for a second and asked if everyone heard that. They all nodded their heads and said what they heard, and we all heard the same sentence. I forgot what it was now because it's been so long, but it was something along the lines of come back. Or where are you going? Which was strange because we were already far enough along the trail that no one would be near, the closest neighbor was on the completely opposite side of S. And what really made us scared was that both of our dads had left a few minutes ago, so there was no chance that they would have been out there. Anyway, because we were all so shaken up from that, we turned back and went inside to ask if it was possible our dads had come back already or if they had left later than we thought, and they were definitely not on the property during whatever happened. This confirmed it for us, and my cousin went and got his gun and some other weapons for us to go back and investigate. We spent probably 30 minutes back there trying to find a source for what happened, but we didn't find anything. I've heard other stories of people hearing voices of people they know or even themselves coming from another room when no one's actually there. I'm wondering if this could have been one of those instances. Late one night, while driving with my cousin in his Crown Victoria, which is a damn fast car, the police drove them a lot. We were just heading down a quiet road surrounded by open fields, which is pretty creepy to begin with, but I knew my cousin's car was fast, so we could get away from danger easily. As we sat in silence, looking out at the passing fields, his radio turned on by itself, which made us both jump. There was no static or a creepy warning like in the movies, it was just turned on to a normal radio station. My cousin turns it off, and the radio turns on again a moment later. He turns it off, and as we come over this big hill, we see car headlights coming down another hill in the distance. It's a narrow road, and we haven't seen any cars passing us or behind us, so being a nice driver, my cousin decides to pull over at the bottom of the hill, but as we just start to descend this hill, we realize this guy must be flying at like 90 miles per hour, so my cousin decides to reverse the big car out, off the big hill, and to the side of the road. The other car, which was speeding quite fast, didn't come over the top of the hill. My cousin mutters to himself, I don't duck and believe this. And we wait a minute longer, and the car doesn't come over the hill, and we decide that he must have wrecked like it hit a ditch and flipped the car, but it was a quiet night, and with my cousin's window down, we didn't hear a crash. So my cousin puts it in drive, and we begin to drive down the hill, and we don't see anything like a wrecked vehicle. At the bottom of the hill, both of us get out and take a look around on both sides of the road, and there are no tire tracks in the mud, and we hadn't heard tires squealing to a stop, so we think the guy must have slowly put on the brakes, and before he got to the top of the hill to where we could see it, they reversed and got the duck out of there, so we get back in the car and drive away. We see no cars behind us, in front of us, to the side, or anything, this car we had just seen is gone. So as we're talking to each other about where the car may be, we notice that a car is following us. But it was a distance away and flying at us like the car before, so my cousin guns it, and both us and the car behind us are flying down this quiet road. The guy behind turns off his headlights, we can still make out the outline of the car in the darkness, and my cousin says out loud, duck it, and he pulls the car over, and the asshole riding our bumper is gone. The car following us vanished, they didn't shoot past or pull in behind us, and if they had pulled off into a field beside us, we would have seen them. If they had taken a sharp turn into the fields, they would have rolled. We just left that road, didn't say a word, and didn't see the car again. Freaky shit. I don't remember the exact road. I was driving home from work one night. I worked in the city, but I lived about 40 minutes away at the time. 
I was on a rural road for about 10 minutes after leaving town, and then suddenly there were lights behind me. A van had followed me with their lights off and turned them on just as they'd pulled up to me. It scared the hell out of me. I slowed down, and they pulled up beside me, so I rolled my window down, and the guy yelled, what the duck? And then started to shout at the guy in the back, but I couldn't tell what he'd said. I stepped on the gas to get out of there. They didn't follow me, and I turned around to go back into town. I was freaking out. If I'm ever followed like that again, I'll just keep driving and call the cops. They clearly thought I was someone else, but that could have gone very badly for me that night. It still creeps me out thinking about it. Earlier this year, in March, I was in my work van, driving from Morninglid to Little Hampton, West Sussex, to start my deliveries. It was early morning, around 5 a.m., it was still pitch black, but the weather was clear. I was driving southbound on the A24 and had just passed the southern tip of the village of Ashington, soon to be approaching the Storrington roundabout. On my left-hand side, there is a section of grass that runs for a few hundred feet and is about six feet wide or so before it becomes a huge thicket of brambles. I saw a creature that I can only describe as cardboard box color. It was about four feet tall, but down on its haunches to where its heels are, were touching its butt. It was facing diagonally away from me into the base of the bushes, so I saw its back and left side of its body more so than anything else. Its spine was showing, as were its ribs, but not to the extreme, and it had small, round ears that were in the location of humans but shaped in a similar way to what black bears are. It had a tail that rose up into a subtle S shape, was very skinny, and seemed to be hairless like the rest of the animal. The face, from what I could see, had a muzzle but was not extremely pronounced, and it seemed to be tracking something in the grass, my guess would be some kind of rodent. Its head movements were very digital and all over the place, and it jumped like how a fox would when pouncing, but in doing so, I saw the soles of the feet, which I remember extremely clearly as they looked like ours. But given the hours that I'm awake and the fact that I'm a proper country boy, I see multiple foxes on a daily basis, this is as far from a fox as a monkey is. It was nothing I had ever seen before, in person, on the telephone, on the internet, or in books. The duration lasted about 5 seconds, and as soon as I saw it, I had shivers all over my body, and I literally said out loud, what the f hash k was that? I couldn't believe my eyes. I got to the roundabout probably 30 seconds later and doubled back on myself to get back onto the same road again in hopes I could get a second glimpse, but I wasn't lucky. The thing about it all that was almost stranger than the sighting itself was that I had such a strong feeling of shame that came over me. I felt so shameful seeing it, and I have no idea why. I remember being in tears because of it, and I don't fully understand why, but I felt like I had no business seeing it, and if I had a regular job that never required me to be up so early, then I never would have. I still have no idea what it was. If anyone has seen anything similar, please share or have any insight. My buddy and I around 20 years ago had a really odd experience one summer night when we decided to take my new car for a spin, by new, I mean a 1987 V6 Camaro with bucket seats. We went for one of those, let's see where the road takes us. We drove at 10 PM. Because teenagers. We kept making left and right turns and eventually found ourselves well outside the city and rural communities. As we kept driving, we noticed that the pavement had ended and the street lights were all but gone. We noticed a lot of houses on the side of the road with what seemed to be candlelight as their only source of light. Dismissing it, we continued until we found ourselves on a dead-end street. Needing gas and having no idea where we were, we turned back, but as we were driving back down the same road, we noticed in the sky what looked like a sunrise. It was the oddest thing we ever saw. My buddy rolled down the window to get a better look, and he said that everything looked hazy. Like he was underwater or something. After driving for about five more minutes, we started to notice that now the houses were all lit up, there were street lights, and the road was paved. We stopped at a gas station that we hadn't noticed before and asked how to get home. The clerk told us to go down the road we just came up from, and it would connect us to a highway. We told them it was a dead end, and he said that he just came from that way, and there is no dead end. We filled up and took his advice, and sure enough, there was no dead end. The streets were all paved, and there was a lot of light on the road now. Wondering what the hell happened, we pulled over, and trying to retrace our steps, we saw that it was only 10.30 pm. What is odd about all this is that according to my car trip meter, we traveled over 140 kilometers. We tried to retrace our steps the next day, but we ended up at the same gas station. Any idea what this was? Slip in time or alternate dimension? I've driven cross country more times than I can count, in pretty much every state except the east coast. Nothing compares to driving through a small, mostly abandoned mining, desert, mountain, 
or swamp town at night. This is the type of town where you stop to get gas and the people at the convenience stores, restaurants, and bars just stare at you until you leave. There's something about those towns that makes you get this feeling in the pit of your stomach, this absolute certainty that all the worst, ugliest, most violent, and hateful parts of humanity are very real and exist with no oversight in these small towns on the fringes of society, hundreds and hundreds of miles from any normal large civilized city. And they want you to leave so they can get back to it. Some horror movies have tried to capture this vibe. Hills have eyes, wrong turns, etc. Nothing compares to seeing it up close and personal. While I was in the Marine Corps, I was the duty driver for my battalion. It's essentially a 24-hour shift where I drive around base to stop at different companies. Normally, you get at least 4 hours of sleep, however, our duty officer was some duckhead and never let me go on my sleeping post. So myself and the staff sergeant that I'm on duty with go on a rove around 3 a.m., almost 20 hours into the shift, and I'm exhausted. There we are driving down an empty, foggy road, if you know Camp Pendleton, that crap gets foggy in the middle of the night, when, out of nowhere, something runs across the road, scaring the shit out of me. I braked really hard, thinking it might have been a coyote or whatever, but it was way too big to be a coyote. I look at the staff sergeant, and he's looking at me as if he didn't see whatever just passed us. We head back to the battalion building, and he's acting weird around me, so for the rest of the duty, I wonder if something actually crossed the street, paranormal or not, or did I imagine something there? It was four years ago. I live in a rural area. I was outside at night, taking my dog out to potty. We have a big sycamore tree in our front yard, and at the time, we had a swing. I looked at the swing and noticed something on it. I froze in fear because what I saw was a dark figure, a figure so black it stood out in the darkness. It seemed to have a misty black aura around it. The darkness outside had a slight blue hue because the sun had set an hour beforehand. I could see it swinging, moving back and forth. All I could do was stand and watch. I wondered if my eyes were playing a trick on me. It looked like it was the size of a teen boy. I grabbed my dog, ran inside, turned on the lights, flooding the yard with light, and ran back outside. The swing seat was still moving, but I saw no one. As I mentioned, I live in a rural area. My driveway is about 100 feet long. My neighbors are all old and in their 70s. I was only gone for a minute. I still question what I saw, but I went back inside. Later that night, as I was falling asleep, I heard a man's voice ask me clearly, what would you do if your dad died? All I could say was, what? I don't know. I don't know how long I was asleep, but I woke up to banging on my door. I wake up and hear my mother crying hard. I open the door, and she says, I think your father is dead. I ran to their room, and he was there. I went outside the next day at the same time and could tell the swing seat was empty, despite it being dark outside. The image of the black figure is still engraved in my mind, and I remember the voice to this day. I think I encountered death. We took a trip in 2017, our first family vacation in 10 years. We started with Carlsbad, then spent a night in Roswell before heading north to the little cabin we had reserved in Colorado. We're from Texas. Most of the terrain around here is flat. We wanted mountains, and I was dead set on taking the scenic route. Duck the interstate. I do the driving, and I love the beauty of backroads. I'd never been through that part of the state before, and the drive through Northeast NM was unexpectedly beautiful, tall, steep, red hills on either side, covered with wildflowers and sage. With the windows down, it smelled amazing. I'm not sure where we were, I don't remember the names of any of the little towns. At some point, we passed signs letting us know we were on reservation land, and I hoped it was okay to pass through. We couldn't see the lowering sun, but it made everything around us glow. It was magical. Shortly after the reservation, it started to get dark, and the purple hills started to roll back down. We entered a long, long stretch of mostly flat road, just the occasional gentle hill, fields interspersed with embankments on either side. This is where it got weird. We'd been the only cars on the road for hours, just the rare truck passing in the opposite direction. The lights were on by now, and I was watching carefully for wildlife near the road. I checked my mirrors out of habit, and I noticed a single headlight a mile or so behind us. Motorcycle, obviously. I watched it follow us for a long time. It never varied its distance, which I thought was weird and kind of creepy. I was sticking to the speed limit, mostly because I didn't want to kill a critter, I successfully avoided half a dozen doing that. But in that place, I could have gone much faster. A lot of drivers would have passed me in frustration. But this mysterious motorcyclist stayed with us, sometimes dipping behind a hill but always keeping our exact pace. After a while, 
I realized the light seemed a little high for a motorcycle. Maybe a truck with one light out? Eventually, I started to get nervous. Everyone else was asleep, but I needed to pee. I hadn't seen a sign for a town in many miles, and I was going to have to go on the side of the road. Thank God it was dark. So I pulled over and waited for the other vehicle to pass. It didn't. I got out of the car and waited some more, listening. There was no engine sound, no insects, and nothing but the wind. Dude should have definitely passed by now, they must have turned off somewhere. On one of those roads, I didn't see. Screw it, I had to go. I grabbed some toilet paper and squatted behind the car, hoping it would shield me if anyone drove by. I'm pissing as fast as I can, and it's not fast enough. Someone could see me, I knew it. In the dark, hiding behind the car, with no sign of life anywhere, I felt watched, I finished as quickly as possible, and I locked the doors when I got in. My family woke up and decided to take advantage of the stop too, much to my dismay. I didn't want to explain why I kept telling them to hurry, but I chivied them right along, watching the empty highway behind us. A mile down the road, the light reappeared. It followed us in exactly the same manner, always the same distance behind, before vanishing suddenly a few miles from the Colorado border. So that's my anticlimactic, haunted highway story. Has anyone heard anything similar along this stretch of road? I'd love to drive it again, just maybe without stopping. I'm an OTR truck driver, which means that I drive across the country multiple times in a month-long period. On a dark July night around 2 a.m., I was headed south on the US 93 highway in Nevada. Approximately 30 miles north of Las Vegas. Traffic was scarce. I haven't seen a single vehicle for the last 40 minutes, at least. The only source of light that illuminated the road were the truck headlights. I was on the phone with a friend of mine, just chatting about random stuff, when, from a distance, about 300 feet ahead of me, I saw something on the shoulder of the road. At first, I thought it might have been a turned over construction sign or a bag of some sort. But as I was approaching the object, I started to make out some features. A human-like figure, I thought. Just to be clear, that area is deserted, and there's absolutely nothing to be found within a 25-mile radius. When I was about 5 yards away, I could see it clearly. It was a boy. 8 to 10 years old, I would say. With a school backpack and a white plush bunny in his right arm, held tightly against his chest. He was just standing there with his cold stare, completely unemotional. Looking me directly in the eyes. He hasn't broken a stare as I passed him. He hasn't even blinked or flinched. And let me remind you that it's an 80-pound semi-truck moving at 65 miles an hour. It's virtually impossible not to react to it driving past you about a yard away. My heart was racing. My whole body was covered in goosebumps. A cold chill went down my spine. I don't think I have ever been so disturbed in my life since I've never had any paranormal encounters. Once I passed him, the first thing that came to mind was that if I see him appear again a couple of miles ahead, I'm going to have a heart attack. But it never happened. The rest of the trip was uneventful. I still don't know what it was. I'm not trying to claim that it was a ghost or the spirit of a deceased child. I just can't find any adequate explanation for it. It was definitely not a hallucination since I was wide awake and talking on the phone. It just seems weird to me. What in the world was a 10-year-old kid doing by himself in the middle of a desert? I just want to say that the story is not made up. I experienced it myself in July of this year. Please let me know if you've ever been around that area and seen something similar. So today my friend, let's call her Ray, and I were in my car at night, windows rolled down, and we were screaming our heads off to loud music. We were feeling absolutely happy, laughing, and having a great time overall while driving around the rich neighborhoods, looking at huge mansions. Now, here comes what spooked us most. We start getting a little put off because of how dark this road was, plus we were going into the middle of a forested area, and everything around us was getting darker and darker. I had to turn on the lights in my car. Now, we still didn't say anything to each other seriously, only joking about being a little nervous and getting weird vibes. I make the mistake of turning down a forked road, and immediately we feel sick to our stomachs, both at the same time. I just looked at her, and we both started talking about how something was not right. It was such an urgent feeling of terror and dread, knowing something terrible was going to happen if we stopped the car. We felt like we had to roll the windows up because we wanted to be safer. Once we finally sped back around and started leaving, I felt an intense feeling of something watching us, and I just could not make myself turn to look to my side into the forest or behind us. The second we got off that road, it felt like a weight came off our shoulders, again at the same time. I've never felt this terrified before, with such a huge pit in my stomach and a sense of dread. What was that? 
Seriously. I have no idea what happened or why we started feeling that way suddenly. I'm so scared, even just thinking about it gives me goosebumps all over. Has anyone else experienced something like this, or do you know what it might have been? The story I'm about to tell is completely true. About five years ago, I moved to the city I'm living in now to go to school. Before I moved, I was living about 1,400 kilometers west of my present location and was working as a pump technician in a rural Albertan municipality. The month before I moved, I had to make a number of trips back and forth to finalize everything, find an apartment, etc. Anyway, what happened took place on one of the return trips. It was late at night, and I was about two hours away from the town that was my home at the time. Now, this was only my second time making this return drive, and because I didn't have the route perfectly worked out, I was using a GPS to supplement my knowledge of the road. I reached an area where I knew I had to make an exit, the problem was that I couldn't remember which one it was. I looked at the GPS, and it told me I still had about a kilometer before my turn. I continued driving and looked at the GPS periodically to gauge the distance. When I was about 500 meters from my turn, the GPS began to flicker for a few moments and then displayed a route reconfiguration screen. The GPS now told me to drive an extra 15 kilometers and turn off at a different exit. Now, I was in no mood to argue with my GPS, so I figured, duck it, it's calculating for the quickest route, what's the worst that can happen? So I complied. I took the turn the GPS told me to take and drove along the road for about 45 minutes with no problem. My iPod was dead, so I was listening to the radio and chain smoking my cigarettes, just having the best time I could possibly have alone on a highway at 3 AM. After having already driven 9 to 10 hours. That's around the point where I began entering a dense fog. This was one of those fogs where you can barely see the road in front of you, the kind where you have to kill your high beams because their reflection is blinding. While driving through this fog, I began to notice that parts of the road felt a little weird to drive on, and when I hit sections where the fog cleared. The highway was suddenly a good 15 feet above the ditches. You literally could not see the ditches on either side of the road, just the fields they climbed towards, it looked as though the highway was a winding bridge. What was worse, however, was what had been making the odd sounds on the road. Road kill. But not just your everyday run-of-the-mill squirrel, porcupine, or other small animal. It was more like somebody fed a deer a stick of dynamite and then set it off. Animals had exploded all over the road, as if a semi had been plowing into animals at an incredible speed. It wasn't even just one or two animals, either. Every kilometer had at least two exploded looking animals on the pavement that I could see between the intermittent walls of fog. I looked at the GPS again, and it said that I had about 80 kilometers to turn off, which was a problem because I was only doing about 60 as the conditions were absolute shit. I sucked it up, it wasn't like I had much of a choice anyway. The radio lost its signal around this point, two stations were fighting over the only frequency that seemed to be getting any signal whatsoever. I turned it down a bit and lit up another cigarette. Then I noticed a yellow glow on the side of the road, coming from the ditch. Instinctively slowed down in case it might have been a deer or something. As I passed by, going about 30, it didn't look like a deer at all. It looked hairless and sort of had a dark mustard sort of color to it. It was right at the edge of the highway too, as if peering over from the ditch. I cannot say for certain, but it almost looked human-like. It was as though it were bipedal, but its eyes were golden. What was most off-putting is that when I drove by it, it hunkered down, as if it were trying to hide, with only its eyes visible. And as I passed, its head turned, and it got up a bit again, watching me drive off. That really freaked me out. Little did I know shit was about to get crazy. As you can imagine, I didn't know what to think about whatever it was I may or may not have seen by the ditch, but rest assured, I just wanted to get home by this point. The fog had cleared considerably by this point, and the fields along the sides of the highway had slowly progressed into a heavily wooded area that didn't seem to be populated whatsoever. I started to realize there was a problem when I was about 2 kilometers away from the highway I was supposed to turn onto. There was no apparent highway in the distance. When I got 300 meters away, there was still no highway. I got closer and closer, the GPS told me I'd need to turn right in 200 meters. Then 100 meters. Then 50. And then. It tells me not to turn right but to turn left instead. And this is all so confusing because there should have been a highway, but all I could see was a single, tiny, dirt road that trailed off into the woods. I really should have known better. I should have known that turning down that road was a bad idea, but what else was I supposed to do? I turned left onto this dirt road, which was more like a path. It was so narrow. My car barely fits on it. What happened next is the most frightening thing that has ever happened in my life. The road started doubling back towards the direction I had come from, like a half circle, 
and the road was so narrow and the trees so thick that I couldn't actually see what I was turning towards until I'd already completed the turn. Once I had made my way around the half circle, the dirt road ended and led into a small clearing. Inside that clearing? Oh, you know, just an abandoned church and graveyard. I looked up at the bell tower and saw what I was, and sometimes still am, convinced was a silhouette staring down on me. I looked down at my GPS, and on its screen flashed the three most terrifying words imaginable. You have arrived, and through the static on the radio, I could have sworn I heard a scream. I attend college in the state of Arizona, and while driving home for Christmas break, my girlfriend and I chose to complete as much of the drive at night as possible. This meant the Navajo and Hopi reservation portion of our drive fell roughly in the hours I listed, making it pitch black during this portion of our travel. My car is equipped with a screen on my dashboard that displays maps, and within some amount of time after entering the reservation, my route started adding jagged and strange loops off the main highway, 160, that, if selected, would add anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes of travel time while seemingly only being maybe a quarter mile. At first, this was explainable because the route alternatives were coordinated with either driveways or utility routes, but after about 15 minutes of us noticing this, the correspondence stopped, and just random detours were left with no explainable attached entry off the highway. We both were a little freaked out by that and other early morning oddities, like a random Rivian truck being the only car we ever had pass us while headlights and distant taillights never caught up or were caught up too. I'm speculating, and unfortunately I did not get a picture, but the routes looked weirdly like some written language and were definitely not what roads look like. Some examples of what the internet was displaying were sharp edges, triangle loops on the end of a straight line orthogonal to the highway, this I remember the most, very erratic zigzags, and other weird knots. Anything at all helpful or informative on this would be immense to me because I cannot find anything anywhere else online, and a family friend of mine said she had something similar happen about four months ago with her GPS on the same highway. This happened about 14 years ago. My boyfriend and I went to a graveyard one night because he had told me a story about how he had seen something there. He didn't really want to take me, but I insisted. He said that he had heard stories about the place, and if you go there and sit every night, you'll eventually see it, he said he had finally seen the thing himself on the third or fourth consecutive night he visited, and it was manlike and grey, but he had only caught a glimpse of it and never went back afterward. I remember him saying he had car trouble when it appeared. Well, I couldn't resist, I wanted to see it for myself. On the third night, we saw it. We were sitting in the dark with the moon being the only source of light, man, we were dumb, and we both suddenly got creeped out for the first time since we had been visiting the place. We changed our minds about the whole thing and decided to leave and never come back, but lo and behold, the car, my car that has never had any trouble before, and not again for years after this incident, wouldn't start. My boyfriend was driving that night and kept trying, and it did eventually start up. When the headlight came on full force, we saw it standing right in front of the car. It was about 7 feet tall, and it was grey, in fact, it looked like a moving statue to me. It was kind of bent over just looking into the windscreen at us, and we were freaking the hell out. Finally, it kind of shifted, and the car started. The thing darted off to the left so quickly that I knew that if it came to the side windows, we'd both be dead within a minute. It was so, so fast. But it just stood to the side of the car, watching us as we drove away. The cemetery was laid out where the gravel road, old country cemetery, went around the whole graveyard in a circle and looped back around so the entrance was also the exit. We were spinning tires and slinging gravel the whole way around, but when we passed the place where the thing was, it hadn't moved. It had been standing there watching us go around the gravel circle, and it let us leave, but it was looking directly at me, the passenger side of the car was facing it, and I couldn't really make out any features because it was dark, but I was overcome with the most severe depression I've ever felt in my life in that moment when I was looking back at the thing. It was like everyone and everything I cared about in my whole life was burned right before my eyes. The pain and hurt were almost tangible, and it took my breath away in that moment. That night, when I was home and finally able to somehow sleep, I had a dream that the thing was calling to me from that graveyard, begging me to come back. It was harmless and miserable, stuck in that old cemetery forever, and it was alone, so alone. When I woke up, I was determined to go back to find the creature, but before I could even tell my boyfriend, I got calls from him and two of my best friends. All three of them had nightmares where the thing brutally murdered and mutilated me. The two girls who called me didn't know anything about the graveyard incident the night before. It was so late when I got back home that I didn't tell anyone about it, I just went to bed. My boyfriend dreamt that I had gone back to the place because I felt bad for it, so he drove out there after me. When he got there, he found the thing ripping me apart and tearing me open. For a long time, I had dreams about it saying, I won't hurt you, 
please come back and help me, I am suffering, and for a while, I had to fight the urge to go back, even after three people told me about their nightmares where I died. The pull isn't strong at all anymore, I guess it faded with time and kids and adulting, but I do think about it often, and I do kind of get a little itch just to drive through and. I don't know, it would be dumb as hell, but there's always been a little nagging voice that whispers about the thing we saw that night. It had a masculine physique but no genitalia, and its eyes were completely black, no iris, pupil, or anything, just black, inky nothingness. I've been searching all these years, but the only pics I've seen that look even remotely like it are Wendigos, but not the ones with fur or antlers, just a grayish humanoid sexless thing. The best way I could actually describe it is. It looked like a statue to me. Does anyone have any ideas what this might be? It's bugged me for damn well two decades, and any suggestions will be appreciated. I was on a car ride with my mother earlier today, going back to the family house from the city. We were taking the usual road when, at about six minutes from our destination, in an area just behind our neighborhood, we saw what seemed to be a mass of dim light, smoke, or fog, which moved slightly from the tree area down to the side of the road and then flew right away at a considerable speed, disappearing into thin air as soon as we approached it with the car. I'm really trying to figure out a more realistic explanation for this that doesn't involve some kind of spirit, apparition, etc., not because I'm an absolute skeptic. I've had at least another notable experience in the past, but this one feels so weird to me that I'm wondering if this just wasn't some kind of rare atmospheric phenomenon. To go further into detail, we were just about six feet away from the thing before it took off, it was rather large, but despite the size and short distance, neither my mother nor I could discern any trait at all, it was like a shapeless mass of white smoke. When we got close enough to almost drive through it, it flew off and disappeared mid-air without changing shape like smoke or steam would normally do, it just gradually turned transparent and disappeared within seconds. Another thing that weirds me out is how it didn't seem to follow the airflow of the car at all, it just moved slightly to the left, opposite where it came from, and then flew straight upwards, and it was way faster than the car, since whatever it was, my mother obviously didn't want to hit it. I immediately looked up, trying to follow it with my eyes, but I couldn't see a thing at all which also doesn't really make sense to me considering how visible it was before the car lights were close enough. It didn't seem to disappear into darkness but rather to dissolve. I'm wondering if this can be compatible with any known atmospheric phenomena, if any of you have had similar experiences, or anything else. Two years ago in New Jersey, after a night of partying in Morristown, me and some friends were heading home on Route 80 West. My one friend, who was the designated driver that night, was driving my car as I rode shotgun because I had about four drinks. We were approaching Denville's exit, exit 39, when both the driver and I noticed a shadow next to a road sign. Now, neither of us thought anything of it and probably would have gone the rest of our lives without ever having mentioned to one another that we thought that shadow, which was just a little deeper and darker than it probably should have been, was a bit weird looking. Except for what took place in the next 10 or so seconds. As we got about 15 yards from that sign, the shadow drew out in front of the car. It seemed to be a little taller than human size, but it didn't have any sort of human silhouette. As a matter of fact, it didn't really have any silhouette, if anything, it was similar to smoke, besides the fact that it stayed a little taller than a human and maybe two and a half feet wide. I guess you could think of it as a really, really tall human whose arms were glued to their sides and legs glued together, with what would have been their silhouette having some shapeless wiggle room to it, almost like how the old Ed, Ed, and Eddie cartoons were animated. On top of the fact that the form of the shadow was strange, it was also one of the deepest blacks that I have ever seen. The car's headlights shined on both sides of it and behind it, but the shadow seemed to somehow be completely devoid of light. I would say that the final identifier of it was that it didn't look three-dimensional at all. It was almost as if it were a movie character cut out, some deep, dark, semi-formless, two-dimensional shadow was standing upright in our three-dimensional world, 15 yards ahead of the car. Keep in mind that we were on the highway going at least 65 miles per hour. The shadow, though, stayed consistently in front of us, floating about 15 yards ahead after it darted out in front of the car. The driver started freaking the duck out and pumping the brakes. The guys in the back seat were staring, dumbfounded, and silent, and I started laughing because it was the coolest ducking thing I'd seen in a long time. As this went on, the shadow, still staying about 15 yards ahead, moved back and forth to the left and the right a few feet each way, sporadically and so quickly that it was almost as if it were teleporting to different spots. And then suddenly it shot off in the other direction towards the median divider, which it went right through into the other side of the highway, where we never saw it again. What the hell could this have been? On the evening of September 7, 2006, 
My friend Jan and I were driving home from a friend's house nearby, where the Big Ear Radio Observatory used to be. It was somewhere around 10 p.m. Near the corner of Cheshire Road and Route 23 between Delaware, Ohio, and Lewis Center, Ohio. We were driving down Route 23, heading south towards Lewis Center, when Jan saw a bright light very distant in the sky. We both joked, saying, it's probably a UFO. So we keep driving, and we eventually lose sight and forget about the distant object in the sky. Then, as we are coming over the precipice of the hill just beyond where the golf course is now, where the telescope once stood, there is an enormous glowing football-shaped UFO hanging right above our heads, steadily moving over top of Route 23, heading towards Lewis Center. It was the most frightening and awe-inspiring thing I have ever witnessed. We stopped on the side of the highway and got out of the car. It was the largest thing I had ever seen. I felt like an ant beneath a giant glowing boot. The object looked like it was engulfed in an orangish or reddish plasma, almost like what the surface of the sun looks like from close up. It looked as though it had flames bubbling and churning within it. I tried to take a video with my Motorola razor, but the phone just would not pick it up at all, even though it had just been working fine and had nearly a full charge. It slowly begins to back away from us a bit and begins floating towards the town of Lewis. We followed it back to Lewis Center, where my friends and I watched it for nearly an hour, and eventually it began to gain altitude. Then, in a dizzying display of lights and flashes, it blasted away in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a wispy blue-slash-teal vapor trail. I found out later on that the Big Ear Radio Observatory in Delaware, Ohio, was where they had received the WOW signal in 1977. This object took up a large portion of the visible sky as we came upon it. I'm an airman, and I have been trained to observe and identify aircraft. I would estimate the object to be the size of an NFL football stadium, just floating above the tree line or highway in houses and buildings. The object was witnessed by at least five people other than myself. As it was gaining altitude, glowing bluish-slash-purplish orbs started cascading out of the main football, cigarette, shaped object one after the other. Each time one appeared, the momentum with which they revolved around the main object intensified until all I could see was a spinning blue glow around the main football object, and then, in the blink of an eye, it shot off into a flash of light in front of it like the Enterprise going to warp speed, leaving only a bluish trailing haze behind. The whole experience was the most profound thing to have ever happened to me in my lifetime up until that point. The encounter I had was in Porterville, California, during the winter of 2007. I worked for the city, driving the equivalent of a taxi that people could call and schedule rides for a flat rate. It's been 15 years, so I am fuzzy on the exact time, but I believe it was late December. The Central Valley doesn't get incredibly cold but can drop down to the high 30s occasionally, and this was one of those times. I was sitting idling in my vehicle, waiting to hear the dispatcher tell me I could drop my fares and head home. I parked in front of the city library, and ahead of me, across the road running perpendicular to the one I was parked on, were these concrete planters, each with a tree growing out of it, that lined the street. People would often stop and sit on these, as they were about 3 to 4 feet tall. I noticed immediately that there was someone sitting there and did a double take because it was what appeared to be a girl of no more than 12. She had long blonde hair and was very pale, but she appeared solid and real. The striking thing about her, other than her age and the fact she appeared alone at 10 at night, was that she was wearing only a thin slip or flimsy nightgown. She was barefoot, with her knees drawn up in front of her. Like I mentioned earlier, this was a night where it was cold, especially for our area. I watched her for a few minutes, thinking maybe someone would come out of one of the businesses that was near where she was sitting. After about five minutes, a couple came out, a man and a woman. They walked right by her without seeming to even notice the girl. About a minute or two later, another group of people came out. One of them was a woman with a shiny winter jacket on. As they passed the girl, she reached out and kind of felt the material on the woman's sleeve. The crazy part is that no one seemed to even react to this. I eventually got a call on my radio, and I had to leave. However, the next night, I saw her again. This was across town when I was driving to drop off my vehicle at our city yard. She was walking down the street, still barefoot and wearing the same thin shift or slip she had worn the previous evening. I did a double take and did a loop around the block to drive by her again and possibly call my dispatcher to let her know that a kid was out walking in greater than 40 degree weather, apparently in her nightgown and shoeless. However, as I drove up next to her, I got an intense feeling of fear, and strangely, age? She was a cute kid, but I haven't ever been able to shake the strange feeling she gave me. Living in that part of California, I have many times visited the Sequoia National Forest and seen the giant trees that are thousands of years old. For anyone who has been there before, the trees almost give off an aura of being ancient, 
like an almost tangible feeling of age, at least for me. This was the same feeling, along with fear of the weirdness that this little wisp of a girl gave me. I must admit, I did nothing but drive away. I never did see this girl after that, despite a lot of nighttime driving around the same areas in the subsequent days and weeks. I have had several theories over the years about her but have never gotten any answers. Years later, I still think about this, despite living in another state and having seen her only twice. I've asked people who live there about it but got nothing. I even went as far as to look for records of missing people as well as deaths. I never saw anything remotely connected. <laughs>